Hello everyone, this is Sinan Ertemel, Assistant Professor of Economics at Istanbul Technical University. I would like to welcome you all to my short lecture on game theory for decision makers. Let's start with the basics. What is game theory? First of all, game theory is a very compact, fun and entertaining name. But if you would like to give a more descriptive name, it should be something like study of strategic decision making among rational individuals in interactive and interdependent setting that can involve competition and cooperation. Game theory basically provides a framework to understand strategic interaction, so it's very important in social sciences such as economics, business and political science and many others. And you can even find numerous applications in other fields such as computer science and evolutionary biology. You can think of game theory as generalization of decision theory. In decision theory, we are trying to understand how one individual makes a decision, optimal decision. So how does she maximize her utility subject to budget and other constraints? And in game theory, we are assuming that everybody else that I am competing or cooperating with, they are also rational. In order to understand the comparison between decision theory and game theory, let us go over one simple example where 10 people go to a restaurant and this is a very simple restaurant with two items on the menu the first one is burger and the second one is soup so burger each individual has identical preferences where they value burger at $40 the meaning of $40 is the following I can pay at most maximum $40 for one burger. However, the price on the menu is $50. And the second item, soup, the value, the maximum price that I can pay for soup is $20. And its price is only $10. So I have two scenarios. The one is decision theory. Namely, each individual is making her own decision. In this case, everybody pays her own bill. Okay, let's understand how the outcome turns out in this case. So let me think about myself. So which food would I choose? I'm going to maximize my utility. In this case, it means I'm going to pick the food that gives me the highest net benefit. That is benefit minus cost. If I order burger, net benefit will be value minus price, value minus cost, that would be 40 minus 50 minus 10. If I order soup, that will be 20 minus 10, $10 net benefit. So I would choose soup. As everybody else have, has identical preferences, they will also order soup. So everybody ordered soup and they pay $10 and they get net benefit, net utility of $10. So let's make this a game. How can we do that? Suppose we say that we are going to split the total bill equally, right? Would that change our decisions? It does. And let's see how. So if I order soup as a utility maximizer, a rational decision maker, I'm going to contemplate on ordering burger. What would happen if I do that? So my value increases from $20 to $40. In a sense, I am going to be $20 happier. And how does my cost increase the, from $10 to $50? The cost increases by $40. However, I'm not going to pay all $40 by myself because, because we are splitting the bill. So my share will be just $4, right? So my net benefit increases by 20, increase in the utility, minus four, which is increase in the cost. That will bring 
net $16 benefit. So I'm gonna switch from the soup to the burger. And everybody will follow. Everybody orders burger, so the total bill will be 50 times 10, 500. Everybody pays equally, so the share of the bill will become $50. How much benefit did I gain by eating a burger? $40, my cost is $50, so I'm gonna lose $10. So is everybody else. So this is also an example of prisoner's dilemma, among which I am going to talk more in subsequent lectures. So by making the game, so in this particular case, everybody is worse off. So why would economists care about game theory, among other social sciences? Because we would like to understand how markets function. And you can think about the markets as a spectrum between two extreme points, monopoly and perfect competition. And we will have other structures in between, what we call imperfect competition. So let's start with the monopoly. There is a single seller, and that seller decides about how much to produce and what price to charge. So there is no interplay, there is no interaction. That seller is profit maximizing firm, right? And let's look at the perfect competition. Here, there are many buyers and sellers trading an identical good. And the price of the good is determined by the aggregate demand and supply. And until it is determined, not any individual buyer or seller can influence the price. They decide on how much to buy and sell at that particular price. So everybody's price taker. So there is no interplay, there, there is no interaction. So these two extremes do not constitute game theory. However, everything in between, which is pretty much everything, can be analyzed by game theory. In particular, few sellers, oligopoly. And game theory works the best if you make it even more compact, like only two firms, which is called duopoly. So in, in this lecture, my most of my examples will include two consumers, two individuals, two firms, and so on. Okay, so what type of games will be studying? Okay, I mean, first of all, we are interested in games of strategy. However, there are many other games that we are playing. Some games can involve kill of one particular individual. That's not the subject of game theory. It could be something about like sports, like how, how well you can do one particular sport. But let's say it is one person sport, then we are not talking about game theory. Or it can involve some games where, again, there is only one individual and that person is making a decision under risk and uncertainty. It can be any like chance games, casino games and and so on. So again, this is decision theory under uncertainty and risk. What we study, what we use game theory are the games of strategy, where we are talking about a multiplayer game and the outcome of the game depends only, depends not only on my action, but also actions of other players. So Think about it as a chess game, right? There are three possible outcomes, win, loss, or tie. And at, let's say as a white player, the outcome that I am going to end up does not only depend on my actions, but also black player's action. So these are the games that we will be studying. So actions of each individual have an effect on the outcome, and all the individuals are aware of this fact. So, like any other theory, in game theory, we will build our model, our models based on some assumptions. The first and the foremost assumption is individuals being rational. So, but later in behavioral game theory, we will look for ways to bring it to more reality by relaxing some assumptions, such as rationality. 
But the standard game theory starts with that particular axiom. What it entails is individuals having well-defined objectives and they are taking an action or actions to pursue them among different alternatives according to his preferences and other constraints, budget, time, and so on. So let's move on with the components of the game. So if we are talking about a simultaneous game, there are three basic components. Players who are playing the game, returning to the chess game, the white and the black player. Strategies, what actions can they make at each instance of the game. And the payoffs associated with the game. And rules of the game. Chess is a sequential game, and there are other games where people are making decisions uh, at the same time. So, auction is uh, auction with the sealed bits is a perfect example for that. So, two firms can bid for a project. Maybe they are not bidding at the same time, but the, the seals are being opened at the same time. So, each firm does not have any idea what the other firm did. And the nature of interaction also matters a lot. So we can talk about game of competition or cooperation. In this lecture series, I'm going to focus on games of competition. So individuals and firms have comp conflicting objectives. And information set, this is at each instance of the game, how much would a particular player know about the moves of the other players, the types of other, other players, and, and so on. And finally, assumptions. So I mentioned about, about rationality, and in some solution concepts, we might need stronger assumptions, such as common knowledge of rationality. In the next lecture, I will talk about these basic assumptions on knowledge and rationality. See you all in the next lecture. Goodbye.